Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone, and welcome. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. I'm your host, Cornelia Stephanie, and we have an exciting show for you today. I created this show, Living Heaven on Earth, to give people examples of what it looks like for heavenly beings, which we all are, to embody the heavenly essence of who we are and live heaven on earth. And that time is now to give positive examples of people that are walking that talk, that are showing up every single day, committed and dedicated to living heaven on earth. And uh, my guest today that I have uh, for you is absolutely amazing because we share a lot of the same core values and we've also transcended a lot of our old conditioning from the past. And one of the core wounds, which I'm sure that you can relate to, is not not being good enough, not being good enough, not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy to live our best life. My uh, special guest today Pamela Lynch is a certified law of attraction coach and retreat leader. She helps clients uncover the blocks to their abundance to rediscover their purpose and see their potential to ignite their true wealth. They call her the wealth igniter. She's assisting people to step into that potential. And that's a huge piece. And what I love about Pam is how she shows up. She has a online following of 5,500 people that um, she teaches daily meditation. And she also has a radio and blog program, Conscious Conversations, to be seen on Self-Discovery Radio. Pamela is also a contributing author of the number one Amazon best-selling book, Warrior Women with Angel Wings. And she assists and guides women to deepen their self-awareness for emotional and spiritual well-being. She's available for speaking engagements and topics that cover addiction and forgiveness, wellness, spirituality, and laws of the universe. She has discovered to uh, live her life in extraordinary ways, and today's conversation is going to help us do that. Welcome to the show, Pamela Lynch. Thank you, Cornelia. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm so delighted to be having this conversation. It's wonderful. And I know right now we're experiencing a few technical difficulties, and sometimes that happens. And so we're going to try to bring you back on because we're live on Facebook. And we're going to try to bring you back on during... um, the the first segment. So right now we're doing this to where people can hear your audio and they can see me, but they can't see you, but we're, we're going to try to resolve that. And no matter what, I want people to grab their notepads and start taking notes. And I know that you're going to inspire us with uh, amazing ways that you assist other people to release their blocks and their limitations and, and give us some insights about living uh, an extraordinary life. And uh, so you have a saying, you have a saying that um, we are born extraordinary, yet we've been conditioned to live ordinary. Can you elaborate a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So we were born in the light. As little beings, we come in and we are these 
sparks of energy that are just brilliant, brilliant light. And in our first while, we are being conditioned to be human. And so we're born extraordinary, but we're conditioned to be ordinary. And our natural state of being is joy, divine love, unconditional love, abundance, wellness, peace, ease. And yet, as we're little beings, we're being conditioned for struggle, conditional love, lack, addiction, war, primarily within our own selves, and disease. And so ease, the opposite of ease is dis-ease, and so much disharmony comes from that. And so we're just being primed as little children, as we're just learning how to do everything. It's automatic. It's We're not able at that point to think about anything yet. We're just doing and being and learning as fast as we can, and we're observing the adults and the other big people around us. And that's where we're learning from. So our conditioning is changing in those first couple of years. Right, right. And it's part of our awakening, isn't it? I mean, it's hard to believe, like now being awake and aware, uh, because you and I are both peers in the industry. You know, we, we, we have, we share a lot of the same values. We do a lot of the same things. And which is one of the things that I absolutely love about you because I, I know that you personally have overcome a lot of challenges, overcome a lot of the negativity, overcome a lot of the conditioning from the past. And you're now showing the way uh, of what it looks like to be an enlightened being, to walk, to live an extraordinary life in the midst of all of the chaos, in the midst of all of the negativity, because you have transcended that energy within yourself and now you help other people do that. And, and Pamela, I just wanna say how much you absolutely impress me. I've been watching you uh, share your daily meditations on Facebook. I wanna tell the listeners right away where they can uh, watch you and, and, and be led by your guidance in, in your daily meditations. Would you share with us your Facebook page and how people can find you? Absolutely. I have it on my main Facebook page, so facebook.com slash Pamela Lee Lynch. I go live most days at quarter to one specific time, so 1245, between 1245 and one o'clock, I'm online, and I'm doing meditations and giving people some insights into why we think the way we think and I have an ebook that I draw from during these conversations that is called Wealthy Words versus Weak Words. So we often speak, and again, we're conditioned to speak in lack and think in lack instead of thinking in abundance. And so it is, I'm able to draw people's attention to being able to switch up some words. And a really great example is the word should. We believe we should be doing something or we should have done something. Instead, we, one of the examples I love to give is when we are speaking of something, I should clean my home, a really easy example. I should clean my home instead of we have these beautiful homes and we get to clean them. See, the energy is so different. I love that. One of one of the the you know one of the things that I do with with my clients is um, really let go of the word struggle. Why why would you choose the word struggle in your vocabulary, and why would you want to struggle with your energy and and use that word? And so that that was something that I came to in a realization back I think it was in 2012 when I released struggle from my life because. I don't want to struggle with anything. I don't want to use that word or, you know, experience myself in struggle. So like you said, it's part of our conditioning to think negatively because we've been programmed negatively and you help people uh, reprogram themselves and move into positivity with your daily ways of um, meditation and choosing different words. Is that right? That's correct. And the one thing I would like to add is that between the ages of zero to two, we're in delta state. 
that we're just intaking and we are living in our subconscious, which is where all of our programming is stored. And we are basically programming to be human. Mm-hmm. And being able to even understand that and draw from that in our own experience that there are these programs. And if we've been programmed, we can be deprogrammed and reprogrammed. Right. And that's part of what, what it is that you're teaching in your courses and everything. And we, um, we're giving, you're giving away uh, a course today called the art of an extraordinary life. And the value of that is part of a coaching program that you're putting on at the end of May. Is that right? And the value of that is $97. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would love to be able to gift that to someone and have them really dig deep into what is going on within their subconscious. And it all comes down to our daily actions. Comes down to, so how is it that people can get, get, um, be the recipient of this amazing, generous gift that you're offering? I'm sorry, how can they? Yeah, how can they get the gift? Because they're going to send you an email at your email address, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're at is and Pamela, what is the uh-huh. It's Pamela Lee Lynch at gmail.com. And we would love for people to be able to phone in or um, be online with us and have that as a draw and connect with me through my email. And so spell the email, Pamela, because um, it, it, it isn't really clear. But at the end of the YouTube, what we'll do is we'll put your email there where people can, can watch the video again and get it. But go ahead and spell out your email. Pamela? Certainly. It's P-A-M-E-L-A Lee, L-E-E, Lynch, L-Y-N-C-H, at gmail.com. Awesome. And mm-hmm. in the subject line, they're going to write an extraordinary life? Certainly. Yeah. Awesome. And how will you choose a winner? So if everybody is emailing you, how will you choose? Because you're giving away one program to one lucky receiver and uh, how will you choose this this person how how will that how will that well let's let's pick a number and say the second person to send me an email is the one who wins how does that sound perfect that's because you know i know that people are going to wonder about okay well how how is that how is that played out so this the mm-hmm. second email that you receive from any person that um is emailing you at pamela lynch at gmail.com in the subject line write an extraordinary life and your program that you're giving away is a 697 dollars value and what exactly uh how long is that program i know it's a coaching program an online coaching program that um, how long will it take? And tell us a little bit more about that. Certainly, it's two months. And it was the brain, it was my, a brain wave that I got when I was thinking about my 60th birthday, which is coming up this Sunday. And I was thinking, I know it takes 60 days to create a new habit. And we often give up too soon in when we're trying to change something in our life. So it is about daily practices and the things that you can do. And I'll share the things that I do on a daily basis that really help me get into the right space, brain space, heart space. The heart set is so important, being being really attuned to our heart and doing really simple things like breathing throughout the day, taking five minutes and journaling at the beginning of the day, setting your intention going through different points and maybe setting alarm during the day. So you get a message that says what you are. So I am extraordinary. I am a genius, things like that. And they just remind you of who you truly are and take a breath. Our breath is one of the most important things that we can focus on during the day to get us re-centered and refocused. 
And so it's two months. We're gonna, I'm going to be offering a one-on-one. It's a really, I, it, you know, I would like it to be a small group where I can give one-on-one coaching each week. And then we'll have group coaching where it will be learning about laws of the universe and how they play out in our life and the daily practices that we uh, want to do. And then we'll ha- I'm going to have a different group for meditation. So I'll be offering meditations where they can just go on at whatever time they feel like they don't need to be live with me to do the meditations. They'll be there with pre-recorded available to, to them within the group. A bunch of goodies in there. It's, it's pretty much the, all the work that I have accumulated and learned over the last Six years as I when I became a coach and really know what you know this I, you know you have this struggle and then you get to a place where it's like you breathe again and you take a deep breath and you go oh and the door is here <laughs> the door is finally here I can see what I'm meant to be doing and how I can serve people and and knowing the steps that it takes to get there and then being able to extend that to other people and say, this is, this is how I did it. Everybody's going to do it their own way, but we have a path to follow, right? And you bring your own things in, but here's some things that worked for me. Yes. Yes. So we know that um, our conditioning and our programming that we're releasing, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, uh, a challenge every day for people to undo the old conditioning and and release some of the blocks and watch their thoughts. And so is that how you created, um, you know, you created the art of living an extraordinary life. And so you're an example of that because that's one of the things that I love about you is how you show up. And I've watched you over the years. I've also had the pleasure of coaching with you and, um, really being able to transcend that core wound of not worthy, not being good enough mm-hmm. and claiming the truth, the, the opposite of that, which is I am worthy. I am absolutely worthy. And to know that I'm infinitely wealthy, to know that I'm infinitely worthy, but it wasn't always like this. Right. And that's part of the no. challenge. Right. And part of it is, so the one-on-one sessions that I'm having with people is to look at what their core belief is that's getting in their way. So the, the thing that's in the way is the way. And that was something that I realized this year. And I had, like everyone, I believe, you know, not, not too many of us get through our childhood unscathed. And so like many people, I had lots of trauma in my early childhood years. I had parents who split up when I was one and a half and we were in France in the Air Force and two men were fighting over my mom and the second man became my stepfather. And so at a very early age, I was witnessing fighting and trauma and being traumatized by it because we don't know what's going on. We have no way of being able to rationalize anything that's happening in those early years. And, and so one of the things that happened for me was we were taken away, we were sent home as a biological family. We were sent back to Canada and my, my parents were fighting about money when that was happening. So first of all, at the age of one, I witnessed my parents fighting or witnessed these men fighting over my mom. And then at Two, we were we were sent back to Canada, and they were fighting about money. So that was my very first. As I went back into look at what my mar- what my markers were, that was the moment. Mm-hmm. So the first moment was I was looking at these people and as a little light being, knowing all we know is love, and looking at these people and going, "This is not love." Of course, I'm not rationally thinking that, but that was the energy of it. This is not love. So I spent my entire life, it set me up for spending my my rest of my life looking out here, looking outwards for love, validation, acceptance, and approval because mm-hmm. I didn't see it in that moment. Yeah. And then we have different moments that happen in our life that are a reflection of that moment. Our spirit is guiding us to look and to re-remember that we are born in the light. 
Yeah, and it's so frightening as as a little kid to be able to, you know, see this fighting and this war going on outside of yourself. And then we're walking around our entire life trying to prove that we're worthy, trying to prove that we're good enough to someone outside of ourselves. Will you please love me? Will you please accept me? When the work really has to begin from the inside, right? Absolutely. And it took me until I was 50 years old to re- to even under- under- to get the the vision and the information that there's an inside world and an outside world because I was living in the outside world. I was pushing down my feelings. I was, I was looking for love in all the wrong places because we need to look within, but I had the, the unworthiness of I'm not lovable enough, Mm -hmm. right? This enough peace that we have is an epidemic in our society. And you can, you can put in whatever word, comes to mind that I'm not whatever enough. I wasn't lovable enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not. And so then that becomes the program in our sub, in our conscious mind and our, the job of our subconscious is to make true whatever our conscious mind is thinking. So if in my, my thoughts, I'm thinking I'm not lovable enough, my subconscious is going to do everything to help me achieve that. Right, and it's it, the universe is a reality that's going to confirm your thoughts, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. and then you see it in your outside world, and you go, well, there you go. I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable enough. And, and yet it's, it's all just a lie. <laughs> it is a lie, and it's the same thing, you know, like when you said, I'm not lovable enough, the same way that you can think, because it's that core wound of not good enough, not worthy, not feeling worthy. Um is the the consciousness with lack so there's always not enough there's not enough money there's not enough time there's not enough love so that it's it's that's the program the core wounding that has to be uh transcendent into the truth which is there's always enough and we are worthy and we're absolutely good enough and it's 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 that it's that shift right it's that it's that program shift um to move into um the value and the worth and the respect and the honor and the truth. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Pamela, we're going to, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to see if we can get you on um, Skype now with us live on Facebook. We're going to take a quick break on the Cornelia Stephanie show. I'm speaking with my special guest, Pamela Lynch and Pamela is here to assist us with living an extraordinary life and being extraordinarily happy. And that's part of living heaven on earth. We'll be right back. See you in a minute. Hi, I'm Tom Lombrezo, and I'm here to tell you of my latest book, The Magic of Finding Love and Peace. What's it all about? Well, can you imagine you're driving home, like I did 17 years ago, in my Jeep, when an angel comes into my Jeep and tells me what to do. I did it, and it saved my life because a terrible accident ensued seconds later. My life changed dramatically since that day, full of spiritual experiences. I have documented those spiritual experiences in this book so that you can relive them yourself. Perhaps you're going through your own spiritual transformation. If there's any doubt in your mind that there are angels or messages you might get from clouds or that you are a spiritual being as well as a human being, you must buy this book. This book is full of Photographs, 375 color photographs, over 278 pages. Of those, 155 uh, photographs are of clouds, clouds that will knock your socks off. So, how do you buy this book? Well, go to my website, www.whenangelstouch.com, whenangelstouch.com, and on the home page, you'll see the, the photograph of the book, and it just says, buy it. So please buy it. It's $25. It's a good bargain for it, what you're getting. And if you need to contact me by email, tom at whenangelstouch.com. And you can see me on Facebook every day at When Angels Touch Facebook. Hi, 
everybody. Welcome back. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm with my special guest, Pamela Lynch, and we're talking about how to live an extraordinary life. And we know that how to live an extraordinary life is, is, is not an easy task. We, we have to have a lot of courage in order to be able to do that. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about Pamela, because she shows up courage every single day doing her work and leading other people and guiding people into meditation. So Pamela, talk to us about how you develop courage and what that, what that shows up like in your life. Thank you. First of all, it takes a decision. So we need to decide that we're going to be courageous. We're, we're not conditioned to be showing up with courage and being, you know, having all of these beautiful attributes and characteristics, we develop them. So we choose to be courageous. We choose to be happy. We choose to be a loving being. So our choice to do that is the very first step for me. Well, it's about awareness, first of all, aware that we're not these things. Because we can often just wake up and we do the same thing every day. And so this gets into the piece with the daily practices where we wake up and we, as soon as we get up, it's a wake up. We're still in spirit. So we've been asleep. And some of us stay there. We're awake, but we're still asleep. So we, when we wake up, we choose, how am I going to live my life today? Am I going to live the same life that I lived yesterday, that I lived a year ago or 10 years ago? And we choose that through what we believe in, what we are thinking about, and the practices that we have during the day. So to be courageous, just even waking up and saying, I'm going to, have, I'm going to be courageous today and do something different. I'm going to choose something different. And what happens is in our brain, we have the same thoughts. We have, they estimate between 50 and 70,000 thoughts a day. And if we have those same thoughts every single day, then we are going to have the same experience every single day. So to have courage and say, I'm going to have, I'm going to be courageous and try something new. I'm going to do something new. And when we do, we start to rewire our brain. And every time we take a step forward, and it doesn't have to be anything big. It does not have to be like I did last year. I belong to a group called the Courage Collective. And so we had a day of courage. And I climbed an 80-foot pole, those little foot, those little foot pads that you put your hand in, and I climbed up. I'm afraid of heights. So this was the most courageous thing I could do on that day. And then you climb up, and then it's the leap of faith where you where you fall down. And that, those moments are big moments. The smaller moments that we can do are just saying, I'm going to pick up the phone and phone this person. We, the five second rule is a beautiful rule by Mel Robbins, where it's within five seconds, we need to make a decision. And we can, it can be, we have a thought, we have an idea, and we have 60,000 thoughts a day. So if we pick one and we say, I'm going to do this, know that you have five seconds to actually act on it. Wow. Whether it is to write it down. Hmm. I'm gonna, I, oh, I, I'm going to phone this person. Well, phone them. If you're not in a position to phone them, write it down, record it on your phone, do any number of things, but take action. Because it is in that action that that is going to give you that one moment. And then you're courageous enough to actually even write it down. Sometimes that feels really uncomfortable. And when we do things that are even a little bit uncomfortable, we turn away from it. We go and we do something else that has to do with one of our vices. We'll, we'll sabotage the moment. We will we'll do something that is really not going to make us happy, but we think it's sabotage. We, we sabotage. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's several different ways that we can sabotage it, but it all comes down to what we're believing. And if we're, we're believing that we are not able to do the thing that's in front of us, then we'll turn away and we'll go do something else. And the one thing for me that I'll share that was really courageous for me on a very deep level was I, I live alone. I work alone. So I coach. I'm on 
on Zoom, I'm on, on calls. And so I'm home alone by myself. And it's very easy at four o'clock in the afternoon or five o'clock in the afternoon to say, I'm going to go get a glass of wine. It would be a really nice thing to have a glass of wine. And we have a relationship with everything in our life. We have a relationship with what we choose to put in our body, with money, with uh, the people in our lives, all of that. We have a relationship. And so for three years, I'm thinking, I really shouldn't do this. I do energy work. It just isn't aligning for me. But it took me three years. And then in January of this year, I decided I chose to not drink. Right. So now it's been since January the 2nd. Because January the 1st is one of my best friend's birthday. So we can't stop anything on that day. But okay. January the 2nd. And so now I'm turning, I'm celebrating my birthday this weekend. And my friends are saying, so are we, are you drinking wine? And I said, maybe, maybe not. But I've decided no, because if I do this weekend, then next weekend when I'm with family for my birthday, they're all used to me drinking. So then that sets it up. And then that's the slippery slope. So it's courageous, first of all, to be able to make it, to know what is in your way. Know what's in your way and be able to come from that place and say, I'm going to be courageous enough to try this. To just for a day, just for the evening. And then the next day you wake up and you go, wow, that feels good. That feels right. And then you do it a little bit longer and it's one day at a time. And so be able to look at within, because this is the piece is that you need to look within to see what's, what's your thing. What are you turning away from? What, are, what is causing you to sabotage? And know that I want to look at that. And it takes courage to look at that. And it takes courage to get up every day and live your life from that place of this is what's right for me, not right for anybody else. It's only important that I recognize that it's right for me and I'm going to come from that place. And, then and I love that. I love that advice. I love that um, example because, again, it's like, you know, like you said, at least for that one day, because what it does, it builds some momentum. And then when you have a, a momentum going in the opposite direction of where or you wouldn't take action or you became stuck and then you said, I'm going to shift this. And then now you've got you've got a positive energy flow that's already that's already going on enough in this direction now. And I just I just love, um, you know, that that it's just a simple example. And isn't that exactly how it is? It's simple. Um, we make everything so complicated. And really, if we just take it one step at a time, one moment at a time, what's stopping me right now? I love the uh, quote that you said, um, to take action in five seconds. What was that? Yeah, that's Mel Robbins. So yeah. it is it is that you do a countdown. So five, four, three, two, one. And in the one, you do the action. Right? So yeah, it's powerful. And it really helps us to do the thing that's right for us. And it's different yeah. for everyone. And remember at the beginning, when I was talking about the things that we are our natural state, one of them is ease. So ease and joy, but yet we're conditioned for dis-ease, right? So we're out of, we're out of our comfort zone, like we're running away from it. And yeah. yet our natural state is for life to be easy. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that it's, there's not going to be challenges, but there's going to be choices that we make that we can look at and say, okay, why, why am I in? So asking questions, right? So why am I in this place? What have I created, right? So we have to take personal responsibility for where we're at. What have I created that I've landed here? And what can I choose differently? And we always have at least nine choices. Nine is kind of that magic number of when we really sit down and we brainstorm and go, okay, what are my choices? I have one choice is to not do anything, just status quo. I'm going to continue doing exactly what that is. That's one choice. We have eight others at least when we sit and we just start writing and we start free flowing what it is that we really want in our life. And again, it takes courage to actually say 
there is something I'd like to change because this isn't working for me. And I don't want to be in the same place 10 years from now. And that's where I was 10 years ago and five years ago when I just knew that I needed to do the deep inner work because then I realized, hey, there is an inner world in here. <laughs> but to look and really examine that and ask ourselves those difficult questions. Yeah. I love that, Pamela. Um, let's tell our listeners again where they can, first of all, you're giving away a course, which is a $697 value to one lucky receiver today. And that person um, has been chosen by the number two. So it's the second email that you receive. And so they can contact you at, give us your email address, spell it out. Okay. P-A-M-E-L-A-L-E-E. L-Y-N-C-H at gmail.com. And they can go check out the program at PamelaLynch.com, your-extraordinary-life. So PamelaLynch.com, your extraordinary life with dashes in between. You can go read about it and just see everything that's in there. There's, like I said earlier, it is the culmination of the my life's work since I left corporate, which was 2011 and that journey since then, where it really has been a process of understanding where my belief system comes from, do, being able to look within and learn from extraordinary people. You and I were in a program together for a year. We had, you know, it was, it, it was a group coaching program. It was a mastermind. And we, I learned a ton from you back in those days. That was, I don't remember what year that was, 2013. So learning from other people, listening and seeing what works for other people. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Take some of the pieces, leave the rest, but have a starting point where today, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this one piece today. Tomorrow, I'm going to do this next piece, or I'm going to continue to do that one piece and be able to do the things that really help us reconnect, I like to say, our hara, our heart, and our head. So our power center in our belly, our heart, which is our love center, and our head, which is not really our head and our brain, but it, it works, that is our wisdom, which is our entire being. And to be able to connect those, and that's the work that I love to do, is being able to help people draw from where they're at and what is blocking them and where's that block within their body because that's where they're having some dis-ease and and it's not even you know the disease the disease but it's the where they're not having it come okay. easy before them and they're being blocked there and to reconnect and have that have that life flow through them because energy needs to move it needs to move in and out up and down and around us and through us and then it comes out Love that, Pamela. We're gonna we're gonna take another break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about um, that amazing happiness that we're all craving and how how to get more of it. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Cornelius Stephanie Show. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Charlene Hess, and I want to share with you my wonderful experience of choosing to use Cornelia Stephanie as my life coach. My life is so different now from where it was when I began working with her in 2011. At that time, I was in a dysfunctional marriage. I had my own business. I was raising two children and completely dead inside. After working with Cornelia, I began to gain confidence. I began to learn and understand how to use my emotions in my life. I learned how to process the emotions that were stored in my body, the ones that I thought that I had already worked through in my 12 years of counseling prior to working with her. The process that she had taken me through of using my emotions to heal my life, to use my anger to find peace, was absolutely incredible. I have been working with her one-on-one uh, -on -one for many years now, and even though I am in a place now where I am thriving in my life, I still refer to Cornelia as my coach, and I still work with her on an ongoing basis, where we're always checking in and keeping me accountable in my growth. After working with her for many years, I decided to go through her wholeness certification coach, uh, coaching program, and it has absolutely been an amazing process. 
I now am a certified empowerment coach and I got certified through her program and I am taking clients and helping them to find the empowerment in their lives. One of the things that I love about Cornelia is that she taught me that I am the authority in my own life. And that was a really difficult experience to go through because it was really fighting against all of the dogma and programming that was so ingrained in my brain that all of the authority is outside of me. But as I began to understand and believe and adopt and know the truth that I am the authority in my life is when everything in my life started to shift and change. I became responsible for my decisions. I became responsible for creating a life that I love. And now I'm here in this amazing, beautiful place, living a life of so much happiness and joy. And no matter what life throws at me, I have the tools to be able to approach everything from a place of empowerment. And now I have the ability to help other people do the same. So working with Cornelia has absolutely been the best decision that I've ever made in my life. It has taken me from a life of absolute misery and given me the tools to be able to have a life of absolute complete joy. So I cannot recommend working with her enough. I hope that you decide to choose to have her as your coach. Go through her empowerment coaching program, go through her wholeness certification, and I guarantee you will regret it. Hi everyone, welcome back. You're listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth, and I'm talking with Pamela Lynch, and we're talking about how to live an extraordinary life in today's changing world. And for um, this last segment, what we want to talk about is how this inner happiness that we're all craving. And so Pamela has um, a lot to say about that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, as I said earlier, it is a choice that we make. We decide because our happiness is not dependent upon future or past circumstances. Mm. We are often say, saying things like, when this happens, I'll be happy. And when I get that promotion or I get that job or I meet that beautiful person, that then I'll be happy. And happiness, as with everything else, happens in the moment. We only have this moment. We are thinking that we're going to be able to future project something. And yes, we, we use future envisioning to see what that looks like. What would it look like for me to be happy? What would it look like for me to be living an extraordinary life? And imagining that, and there's, there's a process that I take people through that is about future envisioning. But we don't wanna live there. We wanna dream there. And then allow that to be, be present within us. So we're creating it. And we're creating from this moment. We're not creating from future moments. We're creating for, we're looking at the future. We're envisioning what that is. We're drawing it in. We're feeling the energy of how do I feel when I'm happy? How does, when I wake up in the morning and I choose to have a happy day, I'm waking up and sometimes I'll wake up and it'll be, you know, quarter to six or 5.30 and, it's, ugh. but then I, as soon as I step out of bed or if I just choose to, to lay in bed for just a few more minutes, I bring that energy in. I choose to be happy. I choose to be joyful. And it is it's so important that we get into the feeling of it because it is the vibration that is going to transcend. It. Feeling, feeling that beautiful energy within us that is our joy, our happiness, our peace, whatever emotion it is that we want to feel, we choose to, to bring that in. And we focus on it and we stay with that as often as we can throughout the day. So doing things, as I mentioned earlier, just putting alarms in your phone. So maybe every 50 minutes, because 50 minutes is a good number when we're working and say we're one of the tasks we're doing is we're writing. Then we know that we want to work for 50 minutes and take a little break and a breathing break, just closing our eyes for a few minutes, which is how my meditations on Facebook started, was just encouraging people to just close their eyes for five minutes in the middle of their day because our, our brain needs the rest. Our eyes need the rest. And then we, when we, our eyes are closed, we're able to focus within again. Be in this place several times a day. And 
knowing that there's several different things that we need to do as well that create happiness. So one of them is forgiveness. When we have, when we look at what our, what our constant thoughts are about what's in the past that's bringing us forward and we can feel it, if something feels good, our body expands. So we're having thoughts and they make us feel really good and we want more of those. Often, because we're conditioned for negativity, we're looking for the stuff from our past or our worry about a future that doesn't necessarily happen. And we bring that into our moment and it's oh, heavy, it's heavy. And we keep thinking about it. And as we think about it, we get, it gets heavier and heavier. And if we focus on that place, then we're not going to be achieving the ultimate goal, which is what all of us want, which is just to feel good. <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. And isn't that, I mean, isn't that the secret? Isn't it the secret to that all, all people uh, crave, like you said, craving happiness and then of, of all the spiritual teachings in the world is um, how, to, how to live a happy life and how to be happy? I mean, that's the name of my email address, you know, is choose a happy life. Choose a happy life. Choose it. And just this morning I was, I was just saying, I, well, I was getting ready for the show and I, I so much love what I do as you do. And, and, you know, on the path of awakening, it's been, it's been a journey to get to the state of being happy in the moment now and not based on our past, not based on our conditioning, not based on some future projection. When I have this relationship, when I have this job, when I make my million bucks or when I got this, then I'll be happy. Then I'll be successful. The point is, is to realize that you have the ability to manifest anything that you want or need in any given moment in time right here and right now. And even this part right now, that's the part that brings the true happiness is to feel that that joy, that that connection with yourself, with with your own inner essence and know that you are enough, that you're worthy, that you are a blessing and that you contribute to the evolution on this planet. And that is to live heaven on earth, to live an extraordinary life. And I want to thank you so much, Pamela, for, um, you know, enlightening us today with your incredible uh, tools and your wisdom and everything that you do to share with others on how they can live an extraordinary life. Let's tell people one more time on what they can do to get your uh, your uh, free coaching package, The Extraordinary Life, $697 value. Where do they get it? They go to PamelaLynch.com. So P-A-M-E-L-A-L-E-E-L-Y-N-C-H at gmail.com. Pop in the subject, your extraordinary life or an extraordinary life. And I will draw from that. And also check it out at PamelaLynch.com slash your extraordinary life with hyphens in between. And if you can't find it, just go down to the bottom of PamelaLynch.com and it's a link down at the bottom. And I so appreciate being here. It's been a delight, even with our technical difficulties today. We still made it happen. <laughs> we show up. That's one of the things I love about us is that we show up no matter what. We just we just keep bringing our best selves with, no matter what. We just keep showing up. We keep showing up, and that positive momentum is already everything's going our way. How could it not? Right? Because we just keep showing up, and being our 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 best selves. Be in our true selves. And then what, what is not to love? What is not to like? Yeah. And what I love to say, too, is that when we choose to take a specific action, all of the guides and all of the energy in the world come behind us, lift us up, and help us on our way. We're never alone. And we have so much support in the unseen world and we have so much support in our seen world. And so it has been a delight seeing you. <laughs> Such a pleasure, Pamela. Thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you everybody for listening, for tuning into the Cornelia Stephanie show. Everybody go sign up for my newsletter. I always share value and content, corneliastephanie.com. You can sign up for my newsletter there. We'll see you again next week. Love and blessings to all. Namaste. You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love. Your call to action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. 
For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.